Hello and welcome to another edition of the Evet Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this week and next I'll talk about Pen and Zoom as I've had uh, multiple requests for this topic. Now Pen and Zoom is a method to incorporate images that are larger than your sequence into this sequence and then being able to zoom into the image without quality loss. Now first let's check out the image that I'll import into Media Composer. I've taken that from Flickr. Uh, it's properly licensed. <laughs> Uh, and as you can see here, uh, the image size is much larger than your uh, 1920 by 1080 average uh, HD sequence. So we want to keep all those pixels intact when zooming into the image. Go to Tools, Effect Palette, Image, and drag and drop the Avid Pen and Zoom effect onto the image. And the way to tell the effect where the image is, is by clicking this little icon up here. That is kind of not very intuitive as well, but now you know if you didn't before. And again, choose the image. And by default, the pen and zoom effect will fill the whole screen with the image and zoom it so that there are no borders. So let's just say we want to end uh, with the whole shot, but we want to start by only showing his face. So that at first we wonder what the hell is wrong with him. And then we see, oh, he's shooting himself with a camera. My God. So select the first keyframe only. And now here you have a couple of options, right? You have the zoom slider. You have the position sliders that we'll use right now. So first, let's uh, use the zoom slider and zoom into the image. Then drag the anchor point so that the preview area shows the part of the image that you want to start your animation with. And as you can see now, you don't actually see the result of what you're doing, but you see a preview. If you want to see the actual resulting image, you have to change the display setting to target. Now we start with zoomed in Im image and you can actually see what's happening. You will have to change this display setting to target at some point. <laughs> no matter how you like working, at the end you have to switch to target because otherwise the zoom will not be shown correctly in the timeline. <laughs> That might be weird to uh, your audience. If you want to make corrections now in target mode, you'll have to, you know, wrap your head around the fact that you have to drag the anchor point up to move the image down and vice versa. So if I want to move the image a little more down, I have to drag the anchor point up. It's weird, but that's target mode for you. Now we can actually preview the animation and yes, it animates out. So let's step this up a little and um, make it a bit more complicated. We'll start with showing only the camera, then getting to the face and then zooming out. So again, I'll copy the first or second keyframe, go somewhere in the center, add a keyframe and paste it. And there too. And the first two keyframes I'll change to show the camera. I'll go to source mode for that because it, you know, it's easier to manipulate the image that way. I'll actually zoom out a little and get back into target mode to actually see what I'm doing. There we are with the camera. We're panning to the guy. And again, zooming out. So let's just say I don't want to stay on the face for so long, but I want to have it be a constant motion. So I'll get rid of one of the keyframes. Again, let's preview. We're moving to the face. We keep standing there a little and then moving out. Now, why is that? Now let's go to the velocity option. 
As you can see, there are two velocity options. One is in and one is out. And they're set to ease in and ease out. And if you know After Effects or anything close to that, you'll know what that means. Ease in means that the animation speed gradually decreases when coming to the keyframe. And ease out means that the animation speed increases again after the keyframe, while at the keyframe exactly, it stands still for a short time. And that is exactly what we see. We're standing still for a short time, and then actually the animation increases again. So what are the other options we have? Linear and constant. So let's first check linear. I'll set the same thing for in and out. And this means that the movement will animate from the second to the third keyframe with the time it just takes to get from the camera to the face in that amount of time. And it will animate between the third and the fourth keyframe with the time it needs to zoom out. There's basically no interpolation being done in the speed of the animation. And this uh, makes for a kind of a jagged animation because the speed simply changes rapidly at the keyframe. This doesn't look very nice. So let's check out the last option, which is constant. This actually changes the in and out at the same time. And why? Because constant means that the time the animation needs from the second to the third keyframe is exactly the time it needs from the third to the fourth keyframe. What this means at the same time is that the position of the third keyframe is actually, uh, you know, not very uh, important right now, because as you will see now, the movement will not change at the position of the keyframe, but exactly in the center of the second and fourth keyframe. So there, we're still moving, we're still moving in that direction, and now we're moving out. And this looks crazy. <laughs> so let's get back to linear for a second. And again, we see the abrupt change when we get to the keyframe. But that is not only because the speed of the animation changes abruptly, but also because the actual path of the animation changes ab abruptly. And that is because the path is set to linear. If we set the path to spline, the actual path will be interpolated. So let's check this out. So you see now the sudden speed change didn't really bother us that much because the path change is interpolated. The spline setting is actually a global setting, so it you know will apply to all keyframes. And what this does as well is, uh, well, let's check out the beginning and the end. Whoa, what is that? It actually interpolates a path between the first two keyframes, even though these two are the same keyframes. The good thing about the Avid Pen and Zoom is that it renders pretty quickly. Now, you might say, why render? It's real time, isn't it? You can play it in real time. Yes, you can, if you have the filtering set to real time. But, you know, real time is not broadcast quality by any stretch of the imagination. If you have a decent monitor, or even a crappy monitor, <laughs> you'll see what I mean. <laughs> um, real time looks horrible, so you have to change the filtering at some point. I usually go with Avid High Quality, because, you know, it's always a good result. <laughs> Even though I've set it to Avid High Quality, which is not real time, it just still plays in real time. So you'll have to remember to render this thing. So Avid Pen and Zoom, it needs to be handled with care. <laughs> okay, that's Avid uh, Pen and Zoom for you. And next week we'll dive into the Boris Continuum complete Pen and Zoom thingy, which is actually quite nice. So uh, look forward to that. 
In any case, thanks for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com or on iTunes. Go to the website for prior episodes and show notes and anything you'd ever want to know uh, about the Avid Screencast. If you have any comments or suggestions, future show topics or anything, drop me a line at mail at epicscreencast.com or just comment on the website. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash screencast and on Facebook, facebook.com slash screencast. And if you'd like to know what kinds of things I do professionally, check out editguy.de, which is where I promote myself. Again, thanks for watching. See you next week. Goodbye.